One of the most common questions I get asked is which market to enter first for your medical device, the EU or the USA? In this video, I'll be covering the three different factors to consider when making this decision, which includes regulations, timelines, costs, including health economics. Number one, regulations. The current regulations for medical devices within the EU is the EU MDR, Medical Device Regulation, which came in force in May 2021. Devices are broken down into three different risk classifications, class 1, 2A, 2B and 3, the highest risk. Conformity assessment audits within the EU are carried out by notified bodies, which are organisations designated by the EU to assess the conformity of products before being placed onto the market. Note in the case of class 1 medical devices, you can self-certify without the need for a notified body assessment, except in the case of devices with a measuring function, sterile or reusable. Once you pass such an audit, you can then create a Declaration of Conformity, DLC, in which you claim conformance to the EU MDR and can apply CE mark for your product, therefore allowing for it to be legally sold and utilised as per its intended use within the EU. In terms of what this process looks like for obtaining a CE mark, this is something I've covered in another video of which I will leave a link in the description below. Another point to consider is due to the medical device regulation being introduced in 2021, there's currently a huge backlog in availability for notified bodies. Therefore, it's not uncommon to have to wait in excess of 12 months prior to you having a conformity assessment all the way up to 24 months. And to further add to this issue, each notified body has a scope of devices which it covers. So in some instances, especially in the case of software devices or contact lenses, not every notified body may be able to work with your types of products which can further add to those delays. A full list of approved notified bodies and their scope can be found on the Nando database, of which I provided a link for in the description below. Unlike the EU, the USA system is different. In this case, you deal directly with the US Food, Drug and Administration, FDA, themselves, of which is a federal agency within the government. Similar to the EU, the FDA also has device risk classifications, which are classes 1 and 2, which may come with or without exemptions. Class 2 devices may also have special controls, and then there's a highest risk known as class 3, similar to the EU, which includes those devices deemed to present a higher risk of illness, injury, or even death. The key difference, however, from the FDA and the EU is the use of what is known as product codes. Wherein the EU devices, similar to the USA, have risk classifications, the FDA takes this further by using a three-letter product code to identify different product types. The name and product code identify the generic category of a device for the FDA. The product code is assigned to a device based on the medical device product classifications designated under 21 CFR parts 862 to 892. The common method or the most common method really for US products is the 510K process, of which is a pre-market submission demonstrating that your device is substantially equivalent to a legally marketed device. You can find such legally marketed devices on the FDA 510K database, of which I provided a link for in the description below. If you have a device of which is considered to be novel, then you may have to consider the de novo process, where you cannot prove substantial equivalence to a legally marketed device in the US. Number two, timelines. At this current moment in time, the EU notified bodies are quoting in excess of 12 months prior to being able to review or process your technical documentation. This does not include the time if deficiencies are found within your documentation or if they have further questions for you. As for the US FDA, the average length of time for a clearance under the 510k pathway is roughly around six months, and in some cases this can often be done sooner. However, this is dependent on your device category, and if the FDA have further questions when reviewing your documentation, which can further add to those delays. However, if you have a novel device and need to take the de novo pathway, then the average review time for this is roughly around 16 months, which is quite similar to the case of the EU. So in that case, it may be that the US is quicker or the EU is quicker, depending on the product type that you have. Number three, costs. In my experience, the cost for an EU notified body assessing your technical files outside of 13485 certification is around 20,000 all the way up to 100,000 euro for class C high classification devices, such as class three with an ancillary drug. The FDA 510K process as of 2022 costs nearly $13,000 or around $3,000 if you qualify for what's known as a small business discount. The de novo process is around $112,000 or around $20,000 for those that qualify for the small business discount. So in short, if you're deemed eligible for the 510K process, then this is more cost-effective than the EU. 
However, in the case of a de novo, it can be of a similar cost and a similar timeline, depending if you qualify for the small business discount. The US is usually the cheaper option in this case. It is important to note that I've not factored in the cost of hiring staff and consultants which help drive this process, which is also something you should consider regardless of which option you take, either the EU or the US. In summary, it may appear that the US is the cheaper and quicker option in most cases in comparison to the EU, which may be true. However, an important point to consider is the health economics part of this. What problem is the device intended to solve? Does your clinical data represent the population of the region that you are targeting? Who is it designed for and how much of that population within that region would benefit from it? If there are any other topics you'd like for me to cover in future, then either leave a comment below or send me a message. If you found this information valuable, then please like and share. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel.